Good evening, folks. This is Deb Delapiano, and this is your short take. So I was inspired today to make a video because of one person, Senator Rick Scott of Florida, who I personally think looks a lot like Lord Voldemort. So that's what I call him. So, I mean, I don't know, but you can't make this up. I go on Twitter, and there's Rick Scott telling socialists and communists not to travel to Florida because they're not welcome there. So when he is talking about socialists and communists, you know he's talking about Democrats, right? Right. And when he's talking about socialists, he means people who support Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. That's actually a fact, okay? So let's talk about Lord Voldemort. Because as CEO of Columbia HCA Medical, which he founded in 1987, he oversaw the biggest Medicare scam in history, okay? The biggest. He was forced out. I believe it was, uh, I get notes here. Sorry about that, but I need them. These are facts, you know, I need facts. His company was investigated. They basically gave kickbacks to kicks kickbacks to doctors so that they would refer patients. Okay. They made the patients look sicker than they really were. So Medicare would pay more. They kept two sets of books. He was the CEO for most of this. Okay. And when the investigation became public in 1997, which is 10 years after he founded the company, uh, the board forced him out. So when he ran for office after that, he made a big thing about how he took ownership and responsibility for what his company did. What he actually did was oversaw all that, all of it. And he walked away from that company with, get this, $300 million in stock, $5.1 million severance package, and a $950,000 per year consulting contract for five years. In other words, Lord Voldemort was incentivized he was treated quite nicely for being a criminal. And he's got the nerve to talk smack about the communists and socialists. Well, let me give you a little tip. If I never see the inside of Florida again, it'll be too soon. I wouldn't step one toe in that state for any reason. If I had to pass through that state to go anywhere, I'd find another way to go but I would not ever go to Florida. I will not order any products that come from Florida. I am done with Florida, okay? Fascists only need apply in Florida. That's what we got here. We have a chance to eliminate Lord Voldemort from the political spectrum in 2024. His seat is up. I suggest to you that you start pressuring. If you're in Florida, if you're unfortunate enough to live in Florida, you start pressuring the DNC to come up with a candidate to run against that slime ball because he's got no business opening his big fat pie hole. Okay. That's number one. Number two, two, two. We're going to talk about Hunter Biden just one more time because I know I alluded to this fact, but uh, the GOP is very unhappy with the Hunter Biden investigation. Now they're talking about impeaching Merrick Garland over it. So let's get one thing straight here. Hunter Biden didn't pay taxes for two years. He has paid those taxes back more than two years ago. All right. So the GOP who's always claiming there is a two-tiered system of justice in this country are actually right in this case because the majority of people who did what Hunter Biden did do not get prosecuted at all. 
He got prosecuted because a Donald Trump appointed prosecutor was left on his case. In, in essence, Hunter Biden got prosecuted because he's the president's son. The charges were misdemeanor charges. He cooperated. He wants it off his back. He wants it done. But in essence, Hunter Biden should never have been charged. Out of all of the people who are caught every year for tax evasion, a very teeny percentage of those people ever really go to jail or are ever criminally charged. Basically, the government works it out. That's what they do. Okay? What's really pissing the GOP off is that they can't find any connection between Hunter Biden's tenure at Burisma and Joe Biden on a corruption level, okay? Now, did Hunter Biden use his daddy's name to get a job? Probably. There are a lot of people who have done that. That's not an uncommon thing. So that doesn't mean that Joe Biden had anything to do with anything he was doing at Burisma. There are no tapes that prove Joe Biden took $5 million in bribery. There are no whistleblowers. And there is no connection between Hunter Biden's tenure at Burisma and Joe Biden. And there never has been. The GOP is desperate, desperate to deflect all of their attention and all of your attention to Joe Biden's corrupt family so that you don't have to look at the actual corruption in Donald Trump's family, all of his family. So you are distracted from what he did with the documents. So you are distracted for what's coming down the pike in Georgia. And now Jack Smith is looking at the fake electors in Nevada. He just gave immunity to two there. And what's coming down the pike on J6. They are desperate, desperate, and more desperate because they have absolutely no ideas that are any good. They are resurrecting now a nationwide ban on abortion. I don't know why anybody ever trusted them when they said that they cared about it being a state's decision. That was never their intention. It was always their intention to come up with a nationwide abortion ban if you give them power back in 2024. Lindsey Graham's talking about it. At least Stefanik's talking about it. Lindsey Graham's talking about 15 weeks, but some other people are talking about shorter times. Asa Hutchinson, everybody considers him normal. Asa Hutchinson has signed on to a nationwide abortion ban. Okay? Donald Trump is talking about expanding the tax cuts that he gave to billionaires, even though his tax cuts in 2018 allowed billionaires to pay fewer taxes than the middle class in 2018. Their plans, their, their programs are all unpopular. What they need is some kind of dirt to distract you from all of this. And by the way, Chris Christie is adamant about gutting Social Security. He's talking about people in their 30s and 40s now having to retire at, say, 70 or even later. This is all the Republicans have. This is what their policies are. This is what they're running on. All of these programs, all of what they talk about have been wildly unpopular for decades. The only time the Republicans win is when the Democrats don't vote. We're looking to get 70%, folks. 70% of Democrats out at the polls in 2024 can get rid of this garbage. And there is plenty of it to take out. So understand this, there is no corruption to find on Joe Biden. There are no bribes. There, are, there is no evidence. There's no whistleblower. There's no tapes. This is all made up shit. And this is just the beginning because we got another year and a half of these people. By then you should be good and goddamn sick of them. I will talk to you all later.